we move on uh, on JK Live. It apparently is not only England where there are accusations of weak leadership. North of the border, it seems that Scotland is in disarray. Nicola Sturgeon, of course, spent hours this weekend being questioned under caution before being released without charge. We should say that. Uh, so did First Minister and SNP leader Humza Yousaf make the brave but justified decision to suspend her. Of course he bloody didn't. Instead, he and the party sent a bunch of flowers as a mark of sympathy. Now, in my opinion, and I could be wrong, with the SNP's reputation being dragged through the mud, what can be done, if anything, to decide to save a party that was all about independence and, frankly, is losing voters and fans and supporters by the minute? Joining me to discuss this is uh, a good friend of the show, uh, former First Minister Scott and Alex Salmon. Alex, thank you very much indeed. Good friend of mine. I'm going straight for it, mate. You know what's coming. If Alex Salmon was still the leader of the SNP, tell me you would have suspended Sturgeon like that. Well, thanks, Sir Gentleman. I, I, I didn't uh, uh, take that view uh, as SNP leader. I, I took the view on the presumption of innocence. Uh, in other words, that people had to be charged with an offence before they were suspended. I didn't have many people in that position, I should add. But it was one or two over the years. And Hamza Yusuf's position, is, is the problem he's suffering is not that that was his position. If he, if he sticks to that consistently, that's a fair position. The difficulty is, of course... That it wasn't the position that Nicola Sturgeon took mm. uh, in her term as leader. I mean, she was suspending people at the, the drop of a hat. Uh, and basically, people like, say, Michelle Thompson, the, the MSP for Falkirk, was uh, forced to resign the whip as an SNP MP back in 2015 for, for no good cause whatsoever. Uh, and she wasn't even interviewed as a suspect. Uh, so the difficulty that Hamza Yusuf's got this now is not an inconsistency in the position he's adopting. The problem he's got is it's not the position that Nicola adopted, and therefore a number of aggrieved people quite rightly are saying, well, you know, if I got suspended, then why is Nicola being treated differently? I would suspect the other problem for Hamza Youssef is that he was the anointed one. He was the person that, that she and Morel wanted. And, and hear me out a second. I mean, I, you're, you're right there in the epicentre of Scottish politics. But to us, you know, heathen south of the border, Alex, right? It seems that the power couple who ran this organisation for many years... There's missing money, there's motorhomes. I mean, it is the most dramatic fall. And most of us here would say... Nicola Sturgeon is now an electoral liability to the SNP, isn't she? Well, it's a very serious matter. I mean, I, I'm not going to get drawn in, as others do, unfortunately. Everybody goes on television, Jeremy, and says, I'm not going to talk about a live police investigation, <laughs> and then promptly goes on to talk about it. I'm the exception. But it's a serious matter. It's not going to be over any time soon. It certainly won't be over by Christmas. Let's put it that way. And therefore, what Hamza Yusuf has to do is to put clear tartan water between his administration, his new first ministership, and what went before, and Nicola's administration. And he should do that, in my view, not, not so much by suspending people. What he should do is sweep away mm. the daft policy programme that he's inherited, stuff like uh, self-identification, like ridiculous bottle schemes, like closing off fishing areas in Scotland, or, or the suspension of trial by jury in certain cases. I mean, you're right, this existed for a thousand years. Uh, so that policy agenda which he inherited, if he's sensible, and if he wants to put the mark of his own leadership in things, he would sweep away the nonsense yeah. and concentrate on health, education, housing, get these correct, put these back into order, common sense policies, and restore the esteem of the Scottish Parliament among the Scottish people. Well, the, the, that... the interesting thing, Alex, is, of course, you now head up ALBA. And so, with a slightly cheeky grin in the side of my face, this plays into your party's hands, doesn't it? Because Scottish independence, again, from us south of the border, probably looks dead in the water when you consider the SNP is losing popularity by the minute. Is this the moment that Alex Salmon comes back? Alba grasps the thistle, did you see what I did there? And rises from the ashes of Sturgeon's disaster and brings what you've always wanted. Is this your moment, Alex? Well, you're right, Alba is grasping the thistle uh, and Alba is the way forward for Scottish independence and Scottish politics. But I, I listen to your programme every night that I can. I love you. I'm one of your viewers as well as one of your participants. And I, I, the other day I, I saw your panel 
saying two things. One, the SNP was suffering badly. They're correct. And then they said, so therefore, Scottish independence is suffering as well. But that's not what's happening, Jeremy. They, I mean, the poll yesterday is Scottish independence at 52%. Maury last week, 53%. These are among the historic highs for Scottish independence. And what you're seeing is a gap opening up between the support for the concept, the principle, the ideal of Scottish independence, which is strong, and support for the SNP, which understandably, in current circumstances, has been slipping. Uh, now, Alex, final question. Uh, as a devout sure. fan of JK Live and sometimes a, a participant, yeah. <laughs> when you rise from the ashes of Sturgeon's debacle and you make it back to power and you are the First Minister, will you still watch and will you still come on? Of course. The, yes to both, Jeremy. Good man. Alex yes Sandler, thank you very, very, very much. Lovely man. <laughs>